Your help. Dasa heard his appeal, warmly embraced the Bodhisattva and said, I will accompany you and set sail with you on the great ocean. As for myself, I will surely not return. You must gather my ashes and leave them on the island of golden sand that is in the middle of the great ocean. When the gear for the voyage had been gathered together, they cut the seventh anchor one. The ship set forth pitching and healing and arrived at the island of precious stones. The merchants argued about the seven kinds of jewels and, when each had had enough, they asked the Bodhisattva why he did not take any. The Bodhisattva asked, What I want is the Sintimani. These jewels are impermanent things and I don't want them. But each of you should limit yourselves so as not to weigh down the ship which cannot withstand it. But the merchants said, The Danter, make some wishes for us so that we will be safe. Then they went away. Dasa said to the Bodhisattva, Let us keep the dinghy separately and we will go another route. Let us wait seven days for the wind. We will sail along the southern coast. We will reach a dangerous place. There will be a craggy shore with a forest of jujube trees the branches of which extend down to the water. A heavy wind will blow our boat and it will break up. You must try to grab a branch and you will be able to save yourself. As for me who have no eyes, I will perish. Beyond the reef there is an island with golden sand and you must bury my body in the sand. This golden sand is pure and that is my wish. As he had said, the wind arose and they sailed off. They came to the craggy shore and according to Dasa's advice, the Bodhisattva tried to grab a branch and succeeded in saving himself. He took Dasa's body and buried it in the golden island. Then he went on alone according to the instructions previously given. For seven days he swam in deep water. For seven days he waded in water up to his neck. For seven days he waded in water up to his thighs. For seven days he waded in water up to his knees. For seven days he walked in mud. Then he saw beautiful lotuses, fresh and delicate, and he said to himself, These lotuses are too fragile. It is necessary to enter into the meditative stabilization of space. Having made his body light by means of this meditative stabilization, he walked on these lotuses for seven days. Then he saw venomous snakes and he said, these poisonous snakes are very formidable. He entered into the meditative stabilization of loving-kindness and he walked on the heads of these venomous serpents for seven days. All the snakes raised their heads and presented them to the Bodhisattva so that he could walk thereon. One when he had overcome these obstacles, he found a city made of the seven kinds of jewels fortified by seven moats. Three great Nagas guarded the gates. Seeing this handsome, graceful bodhisattva adorned with the major and minor marks who had overcome all the obstacles to come to them, these Nagas thought. This is not an ordinary man. This must be a bodhisattva, a man of great merit. They allowed him to enter into the palace. The Naga king and queen had recently lost their son and were still mourning him in their hearts. Seeing the Bodhisattva coming, the Naga Queen, who possessed the super knowledges, recognized that this was her son, and the milk spurted from her breasts. She asked him to be seated and said to him, You are my son. When you left me, where did you take rebirth? The Bodhisattva who, for his part kept the memory of his previous existences, recognized that these were his parents and answered his mother. I took birth in Jambudvipa as the crown prince of a great king. Out of compassion for the poor who are unable to overcome the suffering of hunger and cold, I have come here to look for the Sintamani. His mother said to him, There is a Sintamani on your father's head as an ornament, but it will be difficult to get it. Your father will certainly take you to the treasure house where he keeps his jewels and will certainly give you them at will. You must answer, I do not need these assorted jewels. I want only the precious jewel on the head of the great king. If he understands my compassion for beings, he will consent to giving it to me. This is how you will be able to get it. The Bodhisattva went to his father who was deeply moved and whose joy was boundless. Full of pity for his son who had endured so many dangers to come to him, he showed him magnificent jewels and said, I give you anything you wish. Take what you want. The Bodhisattva answered, I have come from afar to visit the great king in order to look for the Sintamani which is on his head. 
If he understands my compassion for beings, he will give it to me. If he does not want to give it to me, I have no need of anything else. The Naga King replied, I have only this single stone which always serves me as head adornment. The inhabitants of Jambudvip are unfortunate and miserable. You should not go back to them. The Bodhisattva replied, But that is why I endured so many dangers and brave death to come so far. The inhabitants of Jambudvip are unfortunate and miserable and I want to fulfill their desires with the Sintamani. Then with a sermon on the Buddhist path, the Bodhisattva converted his father. The Naga king, giving him the stone, formulated one condition. Here, I give you the stone. But when you are dead, you will return to me. The Bodhisattva answered, I will conform with the king's words with respect. Taking the stone, the Bodhisattva flew up into the sky and in the time it takes to stretch out one's arm, he returned to Jambudvipa. His human parents, the king and queen, seeing their son reach him safe and sound, joyfully embraced him and asked, What have you found? He answered, I have found the Sintamani. Where is it? In the lining of this garment. How big is it? Because of its marvelous qualities, it does not take up much space. And the Bodhisattva said to his parents, Command that the inside and outside of the city be cleaned and that incense be burned, that banners be hung, that the fast and the vows be observed. The next day, early in the morning, he set up a great pole as a monstrance and attached the pearl to its summit. Then the Bodhisattva made the following vow. If I attain Buddhahood and save all beings, then may this stone obey my wishes and make all precious things appear. May it fulfill all the needs of people. Immediately a dark cloud spread and rained down all kinds of precious objects, garments, food, beds and seats, medicines and all the materials that people need. Until the end of the Bodhisattva's life this rain never stopped.